Hi, my name is Lavinia and this is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel to learn board games quickly and easily. Today, I want to teach you and give you tips on how to play Ticket to Ride Europe. If you want to learn Ticket to Ride North America, watch my other video. Ticket to Ride Europe takes a little bit longer to learn than the North America edition as you now learn to build train stations, use ferries and cross dark tunnels. It makes the game even more competitive, but the overall goal of the game is the same, to claim the most railway routes across Europe. The longer the route, the more points you make. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description. In this 2 to 5 player game, you're going to collect train cards with various types of trains in order to fulfill objectives which are called destination tickets. To set up, place the board in the middle of the table. Each player then picks a colour, place the scoring token on the zero and place the 45 train cards and the three train stations in front of them next to the map. Shuffle the train cards and the destination tickets separately. Give four train cards face down to each player. Place the remaining cards near the map and turn the top five cards face up like that. Also place the European Express bonus and the summary scoring card face up next to the board. Then separate the destination tickets in two decks, the long routes in blue and the shorter regular routes in yellow. Deal one long route to each player and discard the remaining blue tickets back in the box. Then deal three regular destination tickets to each player and keep the other cards in a pile face down near the board. Now players have four tickets and must keep at least two, but you can keep all four if you want. You never reveal your destination tickets before the final scoring, even if you complete them or pick new ones. Now you're ready to start the game. Either the most experienced traveler goes first or you draw for first place. Then it continues in clockwise order. Before I explain how each turn works, let me explain how you score points. There are four ways to score points. One, by claiming a route between two cities. Two, completing a continuous path between two cities listed on your destination ticket. Three, having the longest continuous train at the end of the game. Four, in Ticket to Ride Europe, you can also score four points for each train station you still have in reserve at the end of the game. Now let's look at the actions players can take in their turn. They can take one of four possible actions. The first one is they can claim a route between two cities. If you have the corresponding train cards in your hand, you can play them. Take the corresponding trains and place them on each space of the route you are claiming. Note that the grey routes can be claimed by any colour, as long as all the cards you give are of the same colour. For example, if I want to take this route of four, it can't be three orange and one red. It has to be for orange. Mark the points accordingly. Refer to this summary card to see how many points you will make when you place the trains on the board. One train is one point, two trains is two points, three trains is four points, four, seven points, six, 15 points. And if you place eight here, it's 21 points. Once a route has been claimed, it's closed. Note that at four or five players, some routes can be claimed twice, but not by the same player. At two or three players, any color of the double routes can be claimed, but once it's claimed, both routes are closed. You cannot take the second route. Discard the cards that you've just played. As another possible action, you can draw more train cards. There are eight types of regular train cards, 12 for each color, purple, blue, orange, white, green, yellow, black, and red. They match the routes between cities on the map. In addition, there are 14 locomotive cards, Locomotives are like a joker and can be used as any colour when claiming routes. When you use your turn to draw cards, you can either pick two regular train cards or one face-up locomotive. When you pick regular train cards, you can pick them in any combination you want. You can pick the two cards from the five already revealed or two from the top of the deck without looking at them. You can also take one card that's facing up, replace it with one from the top of the deck and take that new card. If the card you reveal is a locomotive, you can no longer take it. At this point, you can either take a card face down from the top of the deck or one of the regular train cards showing. Just remember that if you pick a locomotive from the five displayed cards, you can only pick one card that turn. 
However, you can try your luck, take two from the top of the deck without looking at them and end up with two locomotives. If you reveal a third locomotive, you discard all face-up cards and redraw five new ones. There's no hand limit on the number of train cards that you can hold on your hand. Also, when the deck runs out of cards, you simply reshuffle all the discarded pile and create a new deck. Now, in Ticket to Ride Europe, there are some unique routes that have special requirements in order to be claimed. Those are ferries and tunnels. Ferries are routes that cross water. To claim ferries, you must not only pay the number of trains of the color of your choice, as they are all gray, but in addition, you also need to play one or two locomotives, as indicated on the route itself. Here, it would be one regular train and one locomotive, but here it's two locomotives, as shown here. Tunnels go under many European mountain chains. When you claim tunnels, you must make sure your train is long enough to cross it. First, show the cards which were needed. For instance, here, six pink trains. Then, you're going to draw the top three cards of the train deck. For each card from your route, in this case pink, or for each locomotive, you must add one more card of that color, or a locomotive. And the player adds two locomotives, so that's okay, and he can claim the tunnel. Now, if the player doesn't have enough cards, he cannot claim the route and takes his cards back in the hand. The three cards which were drawn from the top of the deck are discarded. Your third option is to use your turn to draw new destination tickets. You don't need to have completed the tickets you have in your hand. You can do this at any time during the game. You draw three destination tickets from the top of the deck and you must keep at least one. Each ticket shows the name of two cities and a point value. If you place a continuous train between these two cities, you'll score the points. You can keep more than one ticket, but remember that tickets not completed at the end of the game count as negative points. This can be very painful. Place the discarded tickets at the bottom of the ticket deck. There's no hand limit as to the number of tickets you can have in your hand. Finally, as a fourth possible action during your turn, you can build a train station in any city that does not already have one. To build a first train station on that city, the player must discard one train card of any color. Train stations get progressively more expensive. The second station would cost a set of two cards of the same color, and the third station a set of three cards of the same color. A train station allows its owner to use one and only one of the routes belonging to another player into or out of that city to help him connect the cities on the destination tickets. For example here, the station owner does not have to decide which route he will use until the end of the game. However, he must use the same route to the station for all his tickets. Once you're done with your turn, the player on your left will take an action. This goes on and on until there's a player who has two or less trains left. Then all the players will take one more turn, including the person who initiated the end of game. After that, we score the final points. Recount the score for each player's routes. Score 10 points for the European Express bonus for whoever has the longest uninterrupted route. Stations cannot count for this. If players tie for it, they all get 10 points. Add all the points from score destination tickets and deduct those tickets which were not completed. Add four points for each train station in reserve. The player with the most points wins the game. In case of a tie, the player who has completed the most destination tickets is the winner. If still tied, the player who used the least number of stations is declared the winner. In the unlikely event that players are still tied, it will be the player who has the European Express bonus card who wins. And if you're still tied, well, you should just play again. My tips to win at Ticket to Ride Europe are, at the beginning, try to keep that blue destination ticket and have maybe perhaps the shorter routes working around it. 21 points for only 8 cards is a lot of points. It's also less likely that the tunnel is going to get any longer because you already hold 8 cards. Now, if it's part of your longest route, it can be a winning move. Taking chances with tunnels wastes a turn for nothing. Perhaps trying to have extra of the same color or some locomotives. While in the North America edition, it's a lot easier to complete new tickets. 
In the European expansion, it's a lot more tricky and new tickets are harder to complete. Train stations cost more than four points. They cost a turn and they cost at least one card. They should really only be used as a last resort. Don't worry too much about keeping exact count because you can recount at any time during the game. So that's how you play Ticket to Ride Europe. It's a very elegant and simple gameplay with a very good balance between greed, taking more destination tickets, and fear of losing routes to your competitors. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description. And if you'd like me to teach a game, just leave it in the comments. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.